Poor introductions prove painful, not only for the person introduced, but for the audience as well. Pity the poor person standing behind the curtain about to appear and work his or her way back from the handicap created by those opening comments. And no doubt, audience members have already begun to stress themselves, fearing what's to come will be as bad as the introduction. You know the kind of introductions I'm referring to. Something like these. Joanne needs no introduction, so without further ado, Joanne, it's all yours. Or how about this one? I haven't met our speaker this morning, but I'm sure you'll enjoy what he has to say. His topic's there in the program. Please help me welcome to the platform. Or here's another one. Bob Smith, our speaker today, will be talking about health and fitness, a topic of interest to most everyone. In fact, that's a topic particularly dear to my own heart because of my family's recent struggles with my parents' illness. I don't know how many of you know about the five-year battle we've had at my house with my dad's Alzheimer's, but I can tell you from my own experience that this is a disease that ravishes families as well as mine. Two years ago, we began to see the effects when blah, 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 and off the introducer goes on a personal story for the next three minutes and then ends with the main points of the speaker's talk. Don't be guilty. Here are the five things you should do or know before you commit to introducing the speaker at your next management meeting or industry conference or staff retreat or trade show. First, meet the speaker face to face or by phone at least so that you can get a sense of their personality and you can convey that through your introduction. Are they serious or laid back or witty or precise? Would they enjoy a casual banter with you or the audience from the platform or not?